Uh, hello, lizard, lizard, lizard. It's uh, Sunday night, January the 25th, about 10 o'clock. Once again, it's been a while since I've done this, but uh, I got a little uh, personal tale that uh, has struck me here, and I thought I'd get on and uh, uh, tell all you folks about it. You know, when I was a young man, invincible, you know, we all have our invincible period, uh, somebody gave me a lot of trash, usually. I trashed them back. It very seldom came to physical, fisticuffs, but occasionally. And when I got into my late teens, early 20s, weighed 200, 220, kind of varied back and forth. So I could uh, represent myself pretty well. Now there were, as everybody knows, you know, you, no matter how bad or you are, you think you are, you know, there's always somebody out there badder. And, uh, oh, there was a guy in my hometown there in Little Valley that he used to whip me just on principles. But, uh, Aside from him, I could uh, make a pretty good representation of myself. And as I got uh, further on in age, 20s, 30s, of course, I was married up until I was 38. And then I had a single period. And uh, I, uh, like all single guys, you know, if you have my motorcycle, you start working out, you start running, doing, you know, when I hit 40, I was better. I was the best shape in my life. I was, and I uh, I never allowed myself uh, to get into a position where, uh, you know, I had to fight. I uh, generally speaking, uh, I was uh, good enough physical shape that uh, I didn't get a lot of trash. From, you know, hardly anybody, big, small, otherwise. It just, it didn't, it didn't come to the point where, you know, I, I tend to have a smart mouth, and it got me in uh, some tight positions, but uh, I can't think of a time from, say, 38 on that I ever, I ever had a bout with anybody. I had some guys threaten me, but as uh, usually happens, you know, somebody uh, gets pushy and whatnot, uh, you're an unknown quantity to them. And if you uh, assert yourself, usually they'll go off, and, you know, to pick on somebody that looks a little less vulnerable. That generally was the way it was with me. Well, now, I'm 75, soon to be 76. And uh, I no longer have that uh, persona. I'm now one of the vulnerable people, you know, that uh, folks can, uh, you know, I don't have any problems, but uh, people will have a tendency if, if they, uh, if the occasion presents itself, they want to uh, irritate you, they can irritate you, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Now, as an example, kind of have to put a little uh, forward on this. I live in a little town here in Texas, and uh, there's a road that goes by my house. And the road has, it's, it's, it's uh, up, the, up the way a bit, it's probably uh, a mile or so away, it's about a five degree, maybe a four degree grade. But as it gets down here to my house, uh, Essentially, it's flat. Now, there is a little downhill left to it, but it's half percent, you know, maybe one degree. And, uh, you know, people come down and hit the brakes. There's an intersection down here uh, where another road uh, intersects with this one. Actually, this highway out here dead ends into the road down the way. So, uh, uh, over about, oh, 15, 16 miles west of where I live here, there, there's a big gravel pit. Uh, they they haul out a, a lot of aggregate, 
back when the uh, fracking thing was going great guns, which right now it's falling on its head. Uh, they used to get fracking sand out of the uh, gravel pit over there. Uh, they're redoing a lot of highways in the area, and they're uh, bringing uh, road aggregate out, and, and so we got these great big tandem axle gravel haulers that come down the, the grade up, up to about a mile away at tops, and then it comes down for a ways, and then it levels out before it gets here. Well, all of the gravel haulers, you'll hear them. They have a mechanism on the later trucks. I used to drive truck years ago, loved it. But since I drove truck, they have a device they call a... What do they call it? Ah, isn't that pathetic? Uh, Jake brake. It uses the compression in the uh, vehicle. Of course, I used to use the compression in the vehicle, but it would, you know, the... Uh, exhaust would uh, expand the uh, uh, compression out the exhaust but since they built these things called jake brakes uh, it still goes out the exhaust but evidently it opens up and it makes that awful the exhaust makes a real racket i'm sure you've all heard them you know the, you coming down beside you i'm blah 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 you know well as uh, most of you know, I'm a dialysis patient. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I go to my session, and then I come home, I have a bite to eat, and I go to bed. Now, my bed is on the end of the house. It's out there about 60 feet away from that road that goes by. And uh, all gravel haulers that go by, by the time they get to my house, uh, they're just, they're using the brakes. You don't even hear the psh, 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 but, the, but, but they're, they're using the brakes and they stop down here at the intersection and they go on about their business. Except for this one guy. And he loves, he must have, he must have, he says he's an owner operator. I don't believe him, but if he is, he just bought the truck and he loves it. And that Jake Brake is the neatest toy he has ever seen. Because I'll be in there about 6.30, 7 o'clock, just uh, snoozing away. And all of a sudden, clatter, 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 clatter. This guy goes by the house riding that Jake Brake. Wakes me up. Now, I'm not in... Uh, any immediate physical danger from my dialysis but when I come home from the session and I go to bed I need that sleep boy I mean I'm tired and that session will just wipe you out anybody that's on dialysis I'd say a majority of them do the same thing they go have their session they come home and they go to bed so I'm sleeping like a puppy. And all of a sudden, clatter, 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 he goes by. Now, he's almost on the flat out of here. Well, happened time or two. And, of course, you guys know I got the radio. So, I assume this guy's on channel 19. He can hear me. So, I come staggering in here from being woke up. And he, about that time, he's down at the intersection making a turn, going off south. I get on the radio and I say, hey, Bonzo, this is not Wolf Creek Pass. You don't need to use that Jake brake. And he basically tells me to stuff it. <laughs> well, this goes on for, I don't know, a week or so. Every, every other day I see him in my little sleep session. Clatter, 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 clatter. He goes by and wakes me up. Well... I'm getting my fill of this. I figured, now there's got to be this a residential area. It's it ain't a major metropolitan area, but it's you know there's probably 60, 70 houses around here. Now not right close to me, but on the other side of the road, there's a street that goes off towards the north. And I have to assume that you know that that constitutes a uh, 
residential area, and I think, hey, there's got to be a rule. I see the signs out there, you know, don't use the jake brake in this area, yada, yada, yada. So I get down there, and I, I dish some pretty good Welsh sailor language with this guy, and he dishes it back to me, tells me basically, you know, where to stuff it. Now, years passed, <laughs> I'd have gone out, you know, <laughs> tried a little bit of him on. It ain't gonna happen now. But I figured, hey, the good arm of the law will help me with this. So the first thing I did is I got in my car on one of my days off and I drove over to uh, this area where the where gravel pits are. And I go into the office over there and I figure, well, maybe I get some heat on this guy from his owner. Turns out he is an owner operator. No, but he is. He owns his own truck. And they tell me, well, uh, we can't do anything about it, but if you get a, a hold of the county cops, they'll put a stop to it. Okay. Sounds like a plan. In the meantime, I think I have another encounter with him. And I tell him, I said, man, I am going to have your truck, your job. I said, everything. If you don't quit jacking with me, I said, I'm not asking a lot. And I explained to him that, you know, that I've got a medical uh, problem that uh, necessitates me sleeping during the time he's running his Mickey Mouse toy down through there. And I threatened him with everything I can think of. Well, a day or so later, I'm up. And I call up the county, and I say, I have this problem, and I live out here in this little residential thing, and I need uh, for an officer to come out and inform this guy that he needs to see some desist. Well, turns out that I'm as full of bull, you know, I got brown eyes, it's because I'm full up. Anyway, they tell me down to the county that I'm in an unincorporated area, and out here there is no rule. He can just keep on keeping on as long as he wants to. Holy Toledo, my goodness gracious, what will I do? But, I'm wrong, and he's right. Now that's, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, you know, he's well within his rights to bang, bang, bang past me. But evidently, he doesn't know it. And since we exchanged amenities out here and I threatened to sue him into abject poverty, he hadn't done it anymore. I mean, he stopped that day. It was after then that I found out I really can't do anything about it. I mean, he can ride that Jake Brake till, you know, it, uh, it wears out. But the good tooth fairy or somebody, the all omnipotent potentate or somebody out there has prevailed upon his arrogant young butt to, because he has not run that uh, Jake break again. And it's been two, three weeks now. And maybe he just had a change of heart. Because I went out there one time. I knew what his truck looked like. And I'm standing out in the driveway waving this thing around at him. And then I came back in and got on the radio and we went at it again. But from that day forward, he hadn't done it. I've been left in peace. So maybe a good shot of bullshit works from time to time because that's exactly what I was shooting was bullshit because when when I got with the powers that be, they told me, hey, tough stuff does not make, you know, he can do anything he wants to. So, uh, I can't swell up, I can't puff up, go out and whip him. I couldn't do a thing about it, nothing. Except maybe hire me some uh, Latino hitman to go out there, you know, flatten his tires and take him apart. But that, of course, it's no longer an issue. He doesn't do it anymore. And I'm thrilled. Because when I go to bed in there now, 
on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I uh, I get that uh, sleep I need so bad, and I'm thrilled. So anyway, I was as full of bull as a Christmas turkey, and uh, to be perfectly frank about it, I don't know what made him quit. I know that uh, me standing out there in the street waving this thing, to, I couldn't have put the terror of God in him. So, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe he just felt sorry. He said, that old man's out of his ever-loving mind. I guess I'll leave him alone. But anyway, that's about the biggest things happened to me lately. I know I haven't been on here. I've been tired. I, uh, I've been a, I've been a bad boy, I know, I, for many, many years, uh, I, I walked on the treadmill every day, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, and I got out of the habit last summer, and I will tell you that uh, blood pressure, blood pressure's been going up, some of my labs, eh, not too bad, but they weren't what they were. So here, in the last week, I made it a point to every day. I did it yesterday, I did it, or I did it today, I did it yesterday. In fact, I did it, technically speaking, I did it twice today. And I'm going to do it tomorrow, and so forth and so on. But I will say that uh, since I started my, uh, reinstituted my little uh, treadmill regime, I, I feel better seem to be coming out of my funk. So, probably why I'm on here tonight, because I felt like it. Anyway, I hope somebody uh, noticed the uh, video I put on of the elderly lady playing the piano in the street. I, I, I don't know why, but that touched me so hard. Uh, I, um, my life has not always been smooth, and I've had bad times. And I looked at her, on my, it made me want to cry, in fact, I probably shed a tear too. Because uh, anybody that is as talented as she obviously is at one point or another had to be living a good life. I mean, just, it, it makes no sense to me that she'd be a street person with that kind of talent. And, uh, yeah, touched me. I hope that uh, those of you that uh, watch my videos, if you ha uh, haven't seen it, uh, get on my Facebook site. And she's sitting there with her uh, electric piano and watch it. It's worth the trouble. It's worth the time. All right. I'm going to uh, call it quits. I told you a story. My story about my mean old man out here with a uh, truck. I hope he uh, continues ceasing and desisting. I want to say good evening to my sons, Carl and Kyle. Or Kyle and Carl. And by the by, Carl, I saw the uh, Kyle. I saw the uh, motorcycle. Boy, that thing's pretty. Whew. I mean, I'm a biker. You know me. I rode for years. And I'm proud of you. Uh, stay after. Buy, buy the things you like. You're, you're not married. You've got no real responsibilities. Load yourself down with the toys you want. <laughs> First off, it'll make you want to keep working and buy more toys. So, But that's a pretty thing. And if you decide to ride it to New York, this summer, buy a windshield. I mean, put the thing on and use it while you're doing the road trip and then take it off. Because I know you guys today, you don't like windshields. Yeah, it, you know, it makes you into a, you know, sissy. Get you one and put on that thing because uh, you do 4,000 miles round trip on a motorcycle, it'll, uh, it's what they call a numb butt. And a windshield will uh, help alleviate numb butt. Let's see. Ray Marshall. I hope all's going with you. Richard Stan, I tried to call you. Where was I? I, was, I took uh, Tiana 
up to one of the uh, major metropolitan areas to uh, do some shopping she wanted and uh, get the dog uh, groomed. And while I was sitting out, I called you a time or two, didn't I? I? You must have been off the golf course or someplace. Anyway, I'll try you again. I got dialysis tomorrow, but uh, maybe we'll do it on Tuesday. Tracy, hope you've got a good one going. Still want to make that run to uh, Austin. Richard Heitzen Rigger. Top of the day to you. Jim and Babette. Jim, hope you're all right. Pester you when I get up there this summer. Fran, you too. Jim Kersey, I saw your, uh, what was it? You had had uh, umpteen jillion years or something. I forget now, but anyway, I read it and slept since then. So. John Zimbardi. Uh, damn shame about David, but I uh, hope all's well with you. And uh, I'll be up there in about four months. Looking forward to that. Brian, take the test, man. I mean, I need to. I need to have somebody on there. I know, of course. Now I'm. I'm, I'm getting quite a few folks on. Uh, Forty and eighty meters, seventy-five meters. That uh, I'm becoming conversationalist with so working out real well. Howard Van Rensselaer, hope all is well with you. Mike and Pam Lishadone, did I see that correctly? Are you in Australia? Hope so. like to go there myself, but uh, I think it, uh, the situation with the dials is going to preclude things like that. Hey, I think I'll uh, thank God for little favors. <laughs> Tenderized this guy's heart or something, or maybe I scared him. Maybe, maybe he didn't check into it, and he thought I might be able to sue him out of his truck, you know, for being a pest. Anyway, everybody out there have a fine one. Do this again a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm ready for Hillary.